Uh, It'll be up to you if you want this to go out because I may discuss the same thing tomorrow with you and your family. But I want to get you one on one. Uh, don't feel like any questions I want to fucking I'm asking you or I hopefully are not attacking you uh, or anything about that. I feel that there might be some thick air uh, between how maybe the sterners are perceived and maybe the intentions uh, uh, in Pledlow, I guess. Do you feel like it's been an uphill battle for you all? Um, I don't feel it's been an uphill battle per se. I feel that, uh, you know, it, it's different. Um, you know, the original thing was, uh, you know, I remember telling my mom, she probably two, three years ago, that I wanted to do stand-up comedy in the uh, East Coast. And, uh, you know, she was living out there in the D.C. area. She was thinking that she wanted to do, you know, stand-up comedy as well. So we are like, oh, you know, let's take, take a look. You know, we went to a number of stand-up comedy, you know, shows, actual showcase events, and saw, you know, real comedians doing this. And I, I expressed, you know, this to some comedians that I, I would be interested in this. Uh, no, no. And, and, and they kind of told me that, you know, like, this is much harder, you know, it's not about like, you want to do this, you yeah, know, don't I, just say, I want to do this, this is something that you really have to think about, you know, it's a life, and it, it, it's something that you really have to, you know, really uh, get into, so anyways, uh, just real quick, uh, I just want to say, uh, go ahead, you know, but, but, but my mom, you know, she, uh, she really got into it, you know, and she was doing it in the D.C. area, and, uh, you know, she made quite a name for herself in the D.C. area, you know, they really enjoyed her comedy, matter of fact, they did Something that I, I don't think I've ever seen done in comedy one time, and uh, it was a really cool event. My uh, It was the first time my mom and dad went the same night, you know, and it was uh, my mom went up for a comedy. My dad completely surprised her, talked to the host, and said, after after she goes up, I'm going to go up. Yeah. You know, she's been doing this for months already, you know, and so, you know, after my mom gets off the stage, he goes next step on stage is Doug Stern and my dad, you know, and... He comes up, he's like, you know, my goddamn wife's been dragging me to this shit for the past three months, you know, and I've been hearing all these details about our sex life, and I'm tired of it. And he came on the attack, and it was something that I've seen that was so unique in the comedy, you know, realm to, like, see somebody come back. Because quite frequently when I see a comedian, I'm like, what does their mom have to say about them talking about you. their mom like yeah, that yeah, or their yeah, wife, yeah. you know? So I, I thought it was very unique, you know, so... You know, um, I, I wasn't doing no stand-up comedy at this time. I, I was still far from it. And I, I kind of was seeing that Steel City was doing some things. And yeah. and, and still, at this time, I, I, I never even Were you you know, was really time? thinking. I was in Pueblo, and I, I wasn't really thinking about, you know, doing it. But uh, my mom and dad moved back from here. And, uh, you know, and I think that that's kind of when a new chapter started. You know, my mom kind of seen how they're doing things in D.C. and how you know, rooms are opening out there. Because there's so things. many comedians and there's so much Set atmosphere out there. Yeah. Uh, writers meetings, you know, yeah. they, they have, ideas, they have so many writers meetings where they, they, they meet up and they talk about different topics and yeah. they get creative, different ways of um, doing it. creative ideas from different comedians, you yeah. know, and, and half the time, some of the shit that you're saying is ending up in your set, you know, now you're really yeah. getting your creative mind thinking with these yeah. creative writing exercises. <laughs> So she's come from this big city atmosphere to Pueblo. Now, Pueblo is not to be demeaned in any way. I mean, there is so though. much fucking talent here. I agree. You know, and, and it's a totally different atmosphere from D.C. And I think yeah. that's where me and my mom, we really uh, help to sharpen each other out, you know, because she has been doing this on a very structured level. Whereas I'm fairly starting to learn, yeah. I'm like, hey, what happens if I do this? Oh, they like that. Oh, they didn't like that. Let's let's don't do that again, you know. But let's keep doing this. And so I think that, you know, going back to the question, and sorry to ramble, but I don't you know, care. Oh, yeah, cool. yeah, but, yeah, but as far as I have, you know, I do I feel like we're fighting an uphill battle? I I don't feel that way. I feel that you know, basically, what our whole concentration is is that we're really about development of other comedians of everybody you know and 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 the whole sense of it is, is that we feel like you know we can all sharpen off of each other my my sister yeah. tiffany she did stand-up comedy for her first time and she, she killed it job. she killed it you know and and there are things that she could have you know done better you know maybe better you know voice she could have been louder she could have been close so these are the things that we talk about in our writers meetings and we say hey you got a joke here and and you know i i see it but what if you change the words to this you know 
So, so, so basically, the Rob like Melville but... battle, I think that the, the, the problem is is that it's really hard in Pueblo sometimes to get people motivated to yeah. do something. And and once you get the ball rolling, I think that it's really going to progress. I mean, there's so much talent in Pueblo, but to get it concentrated and just to let people know that we're not here, you know what I mean, to, to necessarily be competitors. We're, we are here in the end. For we're here for the community. We're here for the development, local the community. comedy in Colorado, and just everything in Colorado. You know, we love our state, and we love comedy, so we're just going to keep doing what we're doing. You know? Do you feel that you met resistance from comedians at all? I don't feel like we met resistance. Um, I, let, me, I, let me be more specific, and, and I just want to relate to, to do you all feel singled out? I guess. No. Do you not feel a part of the comedian community? That and is by you all, what well, do you mean? I, I, I mean I, the Cerner like, family. Thank I, you very I, much. I, I yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 People, the comedy, or yeah, yeah. No, this, now, this, now, tomorrow the we, 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 we can even edit this in, but tomorrow we can actually have you know a full on conversation. That's what I'm saying. I, 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 I'm I think, sure we'll do it I, tomorrow as well. I think when it boils down to it, I think you know what the main aspect of this question is is that. Uh, you know, do we feel ostracized or or, or, yes. or, or anything like that? And, and that's not the case. Um, you don't feel that way. Whatsoever. We don't feel that okay. way. I feel like, you know, um, here's the way I look at it. I grew up in Pueblo, and I've gotten high with half the motherfucking people here, you know? And these are, my, these are my people, you know what I mean? So I, I understand this audience. When I get up on the open mics, the only reason I succeed, you know, yes, is because I, I can be funny yeah. and, and I can be creative, but I understand what the fuck they want to hear. Now you know that what he I mean? Says because I'm getting high with them before and after should. the show, you know what I mean? So I, I have a really good connection with the audience. So, yeah. um, you know, my mom, she sense. had a very yeah. good connection with the audience in uh, D.C. And she said it, you know, to me, and I think this is quite plainly as you can put it, is that, you know, she has, you know, let me know that, you know, in her opinion, she feels that I've gained the name in uh, Pueblo or mm -hmm. in Colorado that she what she had had in uh, Washington D.C. You know, she's finding a tough transition from D.C. She's, to Pueblo. She's finding, and as would any comedian. I now, now, like I, I said, I I I, sure. I, I, I am one to say uh, Wade Ridley. You know, I mean, you're not holier than not thou, but like I said, I will put it on record that. You are somebody that will make it in any place. I appreciate you go. that. You know, you have that high energy. You know, you've got that comedic edge. I am somebody that if I go to DC, I'm not going to say I'm going to fail, but I'm very interested to see the connection I would have because these are my people. You know what I mean? My question I know what they want to hear. So if I go to DC, are they going to like it? Southside Johnny's. They didn't like that was my, my next question shit to you. as much as they liked it here. Now, and why now, is that? I can tell you a couple reasons. Go ahead. Number one was it was I believe my third time on stage. Okay. It was my first time to a pretty big audience. It was, and, and it was a big stage. It was. And so I was very intimidated to begin with. Every that's every cool. every stand up comedy I've ever done is intimidating it's to me. And that's what I love. Afterwards. I yeah. love it. That adrenaline that you get before you get up on stage or when you just go and you deliver. It's awesome when you fucking go and you bomb. It fucking sucks balls. But you know the one thing about it is that. I think number one, I think I failed with my confidence, you know, and that's where it comes down. It all boils down to when you get up on stage, once you lose your your sense of, of direction, you are the one that controls the situation. You are the motherfucker with the spotlight and the microphone. You got it, you know what I mean? So once you lose control, then you start forgetting your jokes, and then you start messing things up. And I got to a point at uh, Southside Johnny's where I just want to get the fuck off the stage, you know what I mean? And at that there. point, I, and I finally did third it, time as well. I finally my did third it. time, I got the line after a minute. Yeah. Uh, let me address a little Kev though, because he's been writing down points, and I, I want just, to start addressing them because he's been. I love so many points that Doug has made. Go ahead. Yeah. Like uh, the respect he's given to Wade is the first thing I want to address. Like Wade has been such a huge part of my life for Appreciate so many that. years. Yeah. So in the short time that Doug has known Wade, to see these same qualities and the same aspects that I've known forever uh, is amazing to me. Uh, Wade has been as supportive, if not more, uh, as supportive in the in the 
later years previous as well as more supportive in the more recent years to me and my life ever since he has known me and everything about me. Uh, he has supported my family. He is, he's been an amazing person. I want you to know I didn't There's cut to you because time. I didn't know you were going to be throwing that's, compliments that's okay. at me, bro. That's, that's, like, that's, that's the first and most... That like that's commercial the first right that's, that's, Cut to Kev. No, that's okay. Uh, no, I, I understand that. that. I, I realize that that's not the reason. This is like a payout. This is, yeah, right? This like, is, oh, this is oh. the first and most important thing. This is the first and most important thing that has been on my list He's pointing to dad, Joe. Yeah. Uh, and and, and it's, it's a very huge part of the success of my company in recent years. But just generally has been a friend and, and a huge part of my growing up. I'm only 24 years old. Mm -hmm. like, uh, Wade <laughs> has been a part of my life since I was 8, 9. Yeah, right, right. So we're talking a good 15 years. Yeah. And he's never not been the person I know him today. Oh, no I was a douchebag. No story. matter yeah. what anybody says, yeah. I know him to be the douchebag people say. That's very I true. I know him to be the fucking badass people say. I appreciate that. I know him to be the fucking fighter people say. I, I know him to be the fucking... Pussy people say. That's the truth. I know too. him to be the crybaby people That's say. That's the truth too. I know him to be every it aspect. It eats me up alive, Douglas Sterner, when you fucking moved forward in our little round. And Let's see, the I, fact, I'm the sorry, fact, yes, absolutely. The fact yeah. that Douglas Sterner can know that about him within the first couple months that he's known Wade. To know all the things I know about him, well, well, that, and to that, address that, 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 not 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 in every detailed aspect I course. did, but to still address that in yeah. two or three sentences. Well, that, 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 let, me, let me just say, and you know, and this goes back to everything we've discussed so far, is that you know the bottom line is that you know we are here to give respect to you know where respect that was my to, next but, point. The, but but the bottom line is. In the end, we're all here to do the same thing, and that's to support local comedy. Tell that's fucking that's jokes. to get our well, fucking name out there. That's to make somebody have a good day. I, I put on my Facebook, and I don't know if people have noticed this, but this is something that I honestly, to my heart, feel. The biggest irony to my stand-up comedy career is making people laugh when I can barely fake a motherfucking smile. Yeah. You know what I mean? I am depressed and shit all the motherfucking yeah. time. The only time, so this is my motherfucking therapy. When I get up on stage mm -hmm. and I see them motherfuckers laugh at my misery, it, it, you know, it guys. makes me feel good right. for a minute because it makes me feel like, you know what, God damn it, I'm doing something good for an hour, you know? So, you know what, coming back to, are we fighting an uphill battle? You know, uh, do we feel animosity? We don't feel animosity. I feel like it's, it's, you know, Pueblo is such a growing environment. Pueblo is a melting pot yeah. of people, you know? I feel like sometimes my mom, she feels like, you know, she's having to adapt her stuff, and that's great for her. And that's you know, cool. Like, I, I think, you know, let, let me just go back on the record and say that Halloween night uh, was one of the nights, and then the night, the, the week before that, where she came and she did the mental illness, when she brought her new material was really on fucking point, and it was really good, you know what I mean? And so I think that she is transitioning, but it does take time to transition as, like I said, Next time I go to Southside Johnny's, I guarantee you I'm going to bring some different material and bring a different confidence with me. Maybe not different material per se, you know, it will be because now I'm learning what works and what doesn't. You know, you construct one really good banging ass fucking routine and when I go to Southside Johnny's, I'll have that confidence. But my, my main goal as a comedian, I may have it all wrong because I'm not a comedian. This is, you know, something I just really started to dabble in, but I want to have so much in my repertoire that I could go into any motherfucking group. Mm -hmm. And when they like something that I say about my wife, you know, oh, they're a bunch of married couples. Here. Or when they don't like my lead jokes, I know, okay, they don't like it. Or when I say, fuck the police, and they don't like it. You know what, I I wanted to say this, and I don't know how to say this in a joke, but I'll say it on a podcast. This is the one thing I love about fucking Pueblo. I do this joke a lot. Maybe I do it too much, but what this is why I love Pueblo. The joke that I do when I say... You know what, fucking, uh, this is the part of the show I want to thank the police, any police here. What I love about Pueblo is every time I do that joke, I watch the audience. And when I say, I want to thank the police, I start losing them. And they're like, oh, God, you know. 
And when I come back with no cops here, no good, fuck them motherfuckers. I hear them motherfuckers shout, and they're like, yeah, fuck them, fuck them. Go ahead. Yeah, I had, it's so awesome. I had three things, fun. now I have four. <laughs> Take the shit away from Wade for a minute. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to give respect to you for the fucking respect that you give to the community aspect of what we do in Pueblo, Colorado and how we spread it through Colorado, how we make everybody feel that community aspect through the com- through the comedy, through the fucking weed scene, through the dad scene, through fucking everything that we can to be on point and righteous and what is okay to the majority of people. Not everything's going to be okay to everybody, but right on for Douglas Stern giving respect to that whole aspect because the fucking love, this is going to go on my next point, this love that you've given to Pueblo, Colorado is that fucking same love that goes on in that 7-0 community, in that 420 community, in the comedy community that's been started recently, in fucking every, 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 everybody that wants to say that what they're a part of is a community believes in that same fucking thing. That same thing of supporting each other and believing in each other and so, being with each other. I want to lead into my next question, I guess. Uh, some comedians may perceive that uh, a lot of the stirs are only about cash and monetizing and not about jokes. Do you feel that that's a fair representation? I think I think that that's a very unfair representation. I think when it boils down to it, um, you know, we we all want to you know try to make our own way and whatever it may be. And uh, stand-up comedy is just another medium of of doing what we do, you know, when it boils down to, we all we're not here to take advantage of everybody else, to do. And, and everybody is everybody making money. wants to make a living, whether, whether somebody's making do. money in the same room, or whether they're making money, you know, doing a video, or they're making money yeah. because they have a, a magazine that's all well, about stand-up what? comedy, and they're showcasing, you know what, it's all about helping people out, because let's say an organization, for example, which we uh, have created this Pueblo Funny, now the Pueblo Funny organization is is not hosting rooms, but what it's doing is trying to start these writers' meetings, trying to create a, a Facebook page which can kind of discuss some open nights, open mics, you know, like things like uh, I performed at the side pocket yeah. twice, yeah. and I can tell you both times were absolutely fucking horrid. And so I can go back and I can say, hey, you know what, to other comedians thinking about going to the side pocket, you may want to think again, or this is what kind of audience they have. Not to talk bad about anybody, but yeah. it's, a, it's a network, and that's what okay. it boils down to, is we're not here yeah. to make money. I mean, yes, if we can make some money in the yeah, process by eventually, maybe we are doing, you know, we would like to do entertainment things. My mom and dad have been in the entertainment community for years. My mom does venture liquids, and my dad does magic. They lived on a bus and traveled the country. Oh, yeah. So, you know, it, it, it's not about making money, but, you know, I'm living well below my means, you know yeah. what I mean? So I am yeah. not rich in any motherfucking shape or form. I drive a moped with duct tape, all that motherfucking shit. It's not a joke when I sit there and tell you that I'm hiding from my landlord. I didn't pay her yet, yeah. you know what I mean? So, I mean, it, it, it's very true that, you know, we're not property, if that's what the question, you know, is. And so we're not money hungry. But the simple fact that may be is that we are think outside the box kind of people. You know, we're always looking at different ventures, different things we can do, you know, and and whether or not in the future, you know, maybe hosting open mics or maybe, you know, doing some videos, you know, definitely we would be on board with that. But when it comes down to it, it's all about, you know, you know, building everything up. You know, we would never try to be like, let's do a open mic on a Wednesday night. You know what I mean? It just will not fucking happen. You know what I mean? There is no fucking way we would try to compete, you know, with you. Now, that's not, well, what I'm saying is that's not in our immediate plans or even on our fucking future plans. Yeah, I don't care. But, but, but what I'm saying is, is that, you know, we're the kind of people, you know, that if we ever do have a, an endeavor that we're trying to profit we're on, with you and build it, something. it's not something that we're, oh, they're greedy, they're money hungry, they're, they're worried about how they're going to come up. 
it's you know it's a very it's a very uh, business oriented kind of situation. You know, we're not there to step on people's toes. We're here to build people up, you know, and that's what we're trying to do is build ourselves up. You know, I don't know if I want to do stand up comedy, you know, but I I love it. It is my therapy, you know, but eventually maybe I would like that to lead into some creative writing so I could write my own fucking movies that I wanna direct and edit and, you know, different things that, like that. So so it's just an outlet for me and it's a great outlet that I love. But, you know, in the end we're we're just trying to find our, our calling and what we want to do and the rest of our lives, you know what I mean? And, and it's always great to get paid for what we love, you know what I mean? Thank you, Mom. Always. Gotta be. You got anything else on the Because that's all I've got. There's, there's a million shit, dude. Like, uh, uh, especially on the motivation factor. Like, there's a ton of people that can be fucking motivated like a motherfucker but don't know the direction exactly. to put that motivation in. Mm. And they can love to do something. Like they can say, want to do something so much and can fail at it for years and years. Hard work beats talent. They, 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 they don't know. They don't know. They don't know where to I mean, put it. it it's true. Though, you know, and, and another one of my favorite quotes. It's not they don't have our it. biggest weakness is like, our strengths misuse. You know, and, and quotes yeah. are amazing because they're the little tidbits of, of you know, fucking philosophy and a goddamn two sentences. How the fuck can you beat that? You know what I mean? Like, they're amazing. You know, but how about I switch it around on you? You know what I mean? Like, you want to use this or not? But I mean, I'm just kind of curious as to you, you know, um, what do you feel is, you know, yeah, I mean, you? you know, let me, let me just Your say opinion. before, before we uh, get to that is that, you know, in my opinion, you've showed us nothing but respect. And when you uh, came up on the mic yeah. not too long ago, my sister came up and you said the, the fucking sterner clan circus clown. You know? it's the it, truth, bro. It, it was awesome, bro. Yeah. And, and and you've given us nothing but respect and so I've got no animosity towards you, you know. That's not just a kiss your fucking ass. I, 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 I don't take it that way. That is my question. That, that is my question is, that's the real to you. Shit, like, you know, seeing yeah, that yeah, this is our topic is what do you think of the Sterners take on comedy and how do you feel that that may or may not, you know, uh help her you know I'm, I'm not saying help or her but i'm just saying like uh for example you know uh wednesday night that that's a norm for me mm-hmm. and and if i miss a motherfucking wednesday night i feel it yeah do you feel it yo dude uh i'm about working for comedy so for myself uh, if I know there's an open mic I can get to, and it's within my means, and I don't do it, I, I really fuck myself up. Bro. Yeah. Uh, it, you can ask little Kev, I, I'm, I'm fucking, when I come over here in the morning, point, I'm fucking yeah. like, I'm bouncing yeah, totally jokes, I'm that. bouncing jokes off everybody I can, off every reason, but I don't, I, I have different methods and different methodology. He uh, taught me a little bit about that. Yeah. To where, like, I am now trying to find uh, material so I can have a couple different half gram samples to yeah. take to people, personal growers, dispensaries, etc., and show them different samples, different strains, whether it be an indica, sativa, hybrid, whether it be one week, two weeks, three weeks old. Show them how my stuff stays stable, how it maintains flavor, yeah. maintains potency, but I need to get yeah. that aspect. So I was just maintaining yeah. that same aspect of, uh, of that. To, that to answer your question about what I think about the, the Sterner market, uh, and Pete Fine, uh, I think you guys did what you all know how to do and announced yourselves with authority. Uh, which can be misinterpreted. Do you feel disrespected by that in any way? Do I personally? Or as your business? Uh, I feel that Pete Funny did some actions in the past that they may not have intentionally known that they were doing. Uh, but through that, I have a very strict business sense. And people will eventually show themselves. So... Whatever my true intentions end up being, Mr. Douglas Stern, you're going to find out about it, eventually. 
Whereas, uh, if, if you have ulterior yeah, motives but, to if be exactly. funny or yourself have our ulterior motives, uh, people will find out about it yeah, eventually. Yeah. And, and that's why I think some of the things that I looked at and saw were the mistakes that I made when I first started the business. Yeah. And I can look at it and say, and you're either you doing this see. with malicious intent, or you're doing this... Do you care to uh, take yeah. a... Yeah, I can. Uh, yeah, there's a... So, for instance, a photo I take of you with Steel City Stand-Up's logo on it, you replace that with a Pete Funny logo. That shit, to me, is either malicious intent to replace Steel City Stand-Up's work with your own work, or... You're taking advantage of what the photo is there for. No. The reason it was taken to begin with was to promote every comedian here. That's what it was for. No, I, I, I can understand. And, and that. through that, do I look at it and say, listen, you're trying to, to, to stab me in the back and climb up? Or are you just using the fucking resource that's available to you? Which is the reason I'm taking the pictures to begin with. Maybe I need to look at shit that way. You no, know so what I'm saying? I, I understand 100%. So, so go ahead. My main, yeah, yeah, my main is part of that because that, that is a very valid point. So my main thing is that, like I said, I'm all about personal development. I'm all about the, the development of others. You know, that's, that's why I offer the, you know, the speed. Go ahead, sorry. To see, you know, maybe what we can do as far as, you know, where, you know, now, my bad where it, I didn't uh, say, hey, I want to use this for an advertising thing. Now, uh, personally, I don't recall a time where I've ever tried to cover up a logo. Now, I do know times where I've used a photo that you've taken uh -huh. of me on something that I may not have advertised that you took that photo uh -huh. of that is still city. Uh -huh. However, every video that I've ever done uh -huh. and every, uh, you know, publication that I've ever done that is associated uh -huh. with you. I've always made sure to give credit, hosted by Wade Ridley, Steel City. Understand. Already. Now, here's the other problem with this. The other problem with that is in the big world, or not in the big world, but in like the, the corporate world, since Steel City's already developed, you just attaching your, your logo to Steel City is known as piggybacking. Okay. And in the, in the real world, you would pay Steel City to have your logo on. So if you say you're going to be at an open mic with your logo, P. Funny, and Steel City's logo on it, it looks like both of them are in coordination with that, when in actuality, P. Funny has nothing to do with it. Now, if I thought you did that through malicious intent, only to get a foot up on Steel City, I assure you we wouldn't be having this conversation. <laughs> and, and there's no malicious intent. Now... Now, you know, like I say, if I may interject too, Please. You know, and, and it's like I said, there's no malicious intent, but the only factor where Pete Funny does uh, cooperate is one night there was three sterners that, you know, performed myself, my mm -hmm. mom and my dad, mm -hmm. you know, another night my uh, self, my mom and my sister, mm -hmm. you know, myself and my mom fight frequently to rent the place. If we were Pueblo Funny, you know, comedians, Agreed. apparently you can consider, you know. Agreed. So, so there's no... Reason why we can't say Pueblo Funny came to a still city. I, 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 and I'm not. And, and I'm so, not, so, so, my bad, my bad is when. I'm not saying I, that's I an issue. I, I, I'm I, just I, saying when you put P Funny's exactly. logo on the Steel so City's logo, where, Steel City's putting it on, P Funny seems to be where, piggybacking. Where, where, my, where my apologies and where yeah. my bad seems to happen is where, um, you know, I would, I should better contact you and to say, okay, look. I have this. Then this well, that's why we're discussing it. Should, yeah, exactly. That's why we're talking about this, it. This is what I should do as a business person, and then you as a business person is for me to say, hey, look, I've got this video of me, and this is what I want to do. You know, how do you feel that I should present that? You know, is this something that you want me to present your logo on? Yes, no, okay. I won't. Yes, I can post it. I can't. You know, things like that, so that we know, you know, we're on the same level. So that because there there is no malicious intent. My, is, my main focus is that okay, I, I I'm a videographer and a graphic designer, mm -hmm. and my main thing is that I lack things to do. So when I'm bored, I'll be like, oh, let me see what this works. And this works on Photoshop, and oh, this works in editing. If I don't yeah. have anything to edit and I don't have anything to do graphic design with, then I have nothing to to practice my art with, you know. And so 
that's what it comes down to. There's no malicious intent. What it boils down to is me trying to get my art perfected. And like I said, and using my tools. So within this, so with this, that's why I do a better job at networking and making sure that what I'm using is within the aspects of what those who own those rights. So my question to you then, and, and the original ones were, uh, do you feel ostracized? Do you feel any of this? So if you did. Uh, I can apologize so far as uh, the reasons I just showed you are the reasons that maybe people might have seen the ostracize you. You obviously have talent, your whole family. You obviously have motivation, your whole family. Uh, and, 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 and one of the reasons why I wanted to get you. Yeah. We're doing teamwork right uh, now. The dad. Douglas Turner is getting a premium yeah, low temperature dab with some elevated concentrations. Transformer. But but you know and one of the reasons I want to get you and your family on a podcast was to clear this shit. Yeah, and I would love to clear. And that's what we're doing right because now. Yeah. And that's what we're doing right now. Exactly. I, I know there's no ill will. Exactly. I've known your family for a very long time. We're just clearing it up on the microphone. And, and I want to get it out. I want to get your story out. Yeah. Because you sure. guys, you. I feel that you guys probably yeah. aren't getting a fair shake. And, well, and, and I, I feel like when it boils down to it, and the story does get out, that the, the, the real story at hand and what's really at hand is that we are just, you know, comedians who are... You know, trying to make some organization to what our art is and trying to network yeah. with others. And that it's not, you know, it's not about stepping on anybody's toes. It's not about being malicious. Yeah. And, you know, I, as a graphic designer, need to know the things that you're telling me because these are the kind of things that in Absolutely. my business I'm going to run into problems with later. Yeah. So I appreciate See, us and having this conversation. So, and, and That's this why I appreciate it. Because, because I'm telling you, I'm like, telling you, this is my passion. What I'm not, <laughs> I've done some music videos. I've done, you know, I've done commercial, I've done, I've done, I've done, I've done advertising. So the fact that we're having this conversation at all, there you go, I mean, Wade. <coughs> it, it, it helps me out yeah. as far as on my, uh, my business aspect. You know I mean? So I've had this conversation with several other people <coughs> about if you all knew, if you all, if, if you knew what this was going on, because if you knew what was going on, then that's where there would be a fucking issue. So I tend personally to keep people at arm's distance. Yeah. And that's why I wanted to get you on this podcast. Yeah. And that's why I wanted to say, listen, Douglas Sterner for one, uh, you got your your you, you got what you set out, uh, and, and fucking rock and roll for it uh, because you weren't prepared for it. None of this was fucking pre-planned, guys. We just set up a fucking mic after the, yep. the Wednesday night mic, did a couple of hits and started talking. Like yeah. fucking men do, or, or maybe yeah. comedians do, yeah. or well, artists. Just put Straight. up the mic and continued our conversation and, and, that we yeah. were having. Like, like men do, minus the whiskey. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, you know, we got to talk about this sometimes. If that needs to happen, yeah. that needs to happen. Yeah, we do. Uh, but most normally, and with... With men, you gotta do that shit. Uh, with tomorrow, real people, you don't gotta deal with that. We're gonna. Uh, 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 even if you all didn't do comedy, doing a podcast just to hear your family's fucking story. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Because I remember, and I don't want to bring up your brother's name, but I remember going out with you. Based upon that too. And uh, awesome. if that's the case, then I remember you as a very small child. Yeah. Very yeah. small child. Yeah. You thought I was him at first. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I remember throwing a football Dutch in the had a, street. Uh, yeah. uh, oh, fucking. We worked, you, we worked in Alaska on fishing boats together. Like, but there's a... Did you really? Yeah. Do you remember there's that a, gray and blue? The boat sank uh, after we got off football. It. But just shortly thereafter. 47. There's a distinct difference between you and your brother. Though. Yeah. Does he stutter still? Uh, Does he have a... He used to have a little bit of like a mumbling type problem a little I bit. Do, that too. do you really? Yeah. We had some great conversations, man. 
Yeah. <laughs> I was a <laughs> young cat back then. Yeah, Me and your brother did some it's, dirt, it's, bro. Yeah, I believe some it. Some dirt. I, 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 yeah, I don't doubt it. Yeah, I don't doubt it at all, man. Well, just like your sister is in a fucking foreign country, you married to fucking to Nash, yeah. Germany. No shit, huh? Wow. Fucking yeah, anime. Like, uh, if your parents choose to talk about the business they used to do, yeah, that right. whole story in this town. Besides the fact that they lived on a bus, my brother was the youngest escape artist in the country. He escaped from a hundred feet of rope. He got that. tied up by Stephen Atwater and fucking somebody else in the Denver Broncos and escaped from it. You know what I mean? My dad was a magician. My mom, they, they went from preaching to... And your dad tried to run for city council, too. Uh, school district. Uh, he was going to be a school... Uh, Super important. Yeah. 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 probably know all kinds yeah. of crazy yeah. shit yeah. about this. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Love you. Yeah, it's gonna be, uh... All right, that's all I really need. We're gonna go, like, dude. I I love the shit you guys are doing in comedy. Like, it's it's fucking awesome. Like, Tonight was awesome, yeah, dude. It's some awesome. shit I've never I seen. I love the new fucking. I've never the, seen the, the format was kind of weird. Uh, I, love it. I like was, it. Uh, I like that you're gonna do a one on one off. Yeah. Because it gives Keep you an opportunity bro. to like do your five minute set yes. show. Would you, know, you but it does get, give you the opportunity to just boom, you gotta fucking Would you wanna cool. get yourself and two other people together? I can talk to Anthony Soto, no guarantees yet. Maybe do the private cannabis party the twenty Fuck yeah, dude. Would you guys Fuck yes. Fuck yes. If I can dude. get you into that. Fuck yes. I right, wanna figure do out it. who you want to do that. I already got it in my head. I will Maybe. get up Anthony tomorrow. <laughs> Maybe I will find out. If there's any performers, that, if there are going to be any performers, uh, the Cloud Nine Hookah Bar puts on one per month. If but we get a private candidate, if we can and get, it's Black Pegasus little brother that owns that. If we can get twenty five so, minutes for the three or each? yeah, three for the three. Minutes. We could probably get you thirty minutes. And that's 30. that's even better. If we can get you ten minutes a piece, yeah. Or maybe like five, five and a headliner or something. Or yeah. five, ten and a headliner. Five, yeah. ten, fifteen. Yeah, that's cool with you me know, too. Or Shit. Something, whatever. Yeah. Uh, I'll talk to Anthony tomorrow about it. Please. And see if I can get you guys down. Please. Because it, it won't have to be any loud music. It can be just something like that, that you know, that yeah. can in the comedy show. You know? Absolutely. So, I'll see what's up on that tomorrow. Please. For sure. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna stop this because I got all the the intro I want. Uh, and there's a lot of air that was cleared in my head anyway. And plus, I'm gonna ask these uh, most of these.